Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Shemaine and for today's video, I will be doing my first ever Q&A. Um, if you didn't know, today is my birthday. The day that I am posting this video is my birthday. My birthday is on the 24th of May. I was born in 95, so I am 25 years old this year and officially in my quarter life crisis. I've been having my crisis already. <laughs> but anyways, um, I asked on Instagram for some questions to be answered so that I can answer the questions because I didn't want to just do like a get to know me tag and tell you like my favorite color and stuff. At least not for my first one. So um, I asked my Instagram followers to send me some questions and I got quite a couple. Um, I was actually very afraid of not getting any questions because I'm not really that big. On Instagram so <laughs> and, and engagement has been really really shitty um, on on Instagram but turned out fine we have some questions actually more than I can answer today I think hopefully I can answer everything but a lot of them are actually quite complicated to answer I don't know maybe I'm just like wired to be long-winded I'll of course try to keep it as short as possible but anyways yes if you're wondering I am dressed for the occasion it's my birthday video so i thought i should wear something better than just my regular t-shirts and i also cut my hair and to make this video look a little bit more interesting and something that you can actually watch as i talk to you i'm gonna do my makeup while i answer the questions but because i'm going to be focusing on answering questions i'm not going to talk about the makeup so information on the makeup that i'm using will be listed on screen and down below in the description box and if you have any questions about what and why i do certain like makeup techniques and stuff just feel free to leave like questions down below and i will definitely answer them for you oh speaking of go follow me on instagram if you're watching this and you're not following me on instagram usually i put this at the end of a video <laughs> Usually I put this at the end of my video, but since it's my birthday, maybe you can give me a little little tiny birthday present by just hitting the subscribe button down below and also follow me on Instagram. Okay. And with that, I'll just get started with the questions, okay? There's a lot of different questions with different like intensities. So um, let me just try to pick one that is actually doable. I have a younger sister, if you don't know, and she's only one year younger than me. I've actually posted the Instagram stories, um, ask me anything widget like twice, like on two days, like for two days, like wait, I posted it twice, one for each day. I posted it for two days. Wait, okay, I'm, I'm very confused. But anyway. <laughs> What? On both days, my sister asked me many, multiple, quite stupid questions. I'm not gonna answer every single one of them, but there are some that I feel like is worth answering. So the first one <laughs> that she asked was, How many years since you last left your house? <laughs> okay, so if you are watching this like way in the future, we are currently now still in the coronavirus um, circuit breaker as Singapore calls it, but basically we are in self-isolation and quarantine. So we haven't been allowed to really leave our houses, but you can obviously like any other country like leave for groceries and stuff and to buy food, things like that. So um, because I live with my parents, groceries are dealt with mainly by my parents, so they will just drive over to the nearest supermarket to just get groceries and whatever other necessary whatever other necessities that we need so there really isn't a need for me to go out and since like i'm quite the homebody i actually haven't left my house stepped out of my front door since the circuit breaker started on april 7th if i'm not wrong so right now it's 24th may so i've been at home for a full almost no wait yeah almost two months like my sister still left like once in a while to like just go and get some stuff at the drugstore or like just to take walks around the block because she probably just feels a lot more suffocated at home than I do personality difference therefore she asked me because I'm the only one in my in my family that hasn't actually left the house so yeah she also asked me why do I drop so much hair because we share the same bathroom I don't know I don't think I drop that much hair actually i used to drop a lot of hair back when i wasn't like getting my vitamins and stuff from my supplements ever since i've gotten better and more balanced with my diet and with my my like vitamin taking and stuff i don't think i drop that much hair but if i do it's probably because i have the longest hair at home and probably more hair than she does so it just drops a lot more i guess anyways yeah that doesn't just silly silly sister things but i hope you enjoyed it <laughs> so derp xe asks 
I actually talk to Derp X E quite a lot on Instagram because um they actually support me quite a bit on my channel, on my Instagram page. So I'm quite happy that they ask me some questions as well. So they ask I don't have a specific but I'm interested in some of your stories. But for starters, maybe go with what are some things you think that's very you, like iconic things about you. Not sure what that zi is. <laughs> I had to give this a little bit of thought. Some things that are very iconic about me. I can't eat things about either. Some things that probably define me as a person. Zi means word by the way in Chinese or in Mandarin. Something that makes me me or something that's very unique to me I guess that's what they are asking. I've given this so much thought but I still haven't gotten like anywhere close to like an answer. <laughs> Let me think about this. Um, I think everyone knows me as the person that knows makeup quite well and does makeup quite a bit and Basically, I feel like everyone just associates me to makeup. Like, everyone comes to me for makeup advice. Everyone comes to me when there's something new and exciting about makeup that they've seen and they think that they can share with me about. Because obviously, me being like super into this thing and like filming videos and living my life literally on the beauty community side of things on, on the internet, <laughs> I know a lot more than everyone else. My mom is vacuuming. I'm just gonna power through. I just noticed that like if my friends stumble across like photos of like makeup or fashion or like something in the beauty industry that, that interests them and things that I might be interested as well, they were just sent to me. So I guess <laughs> it's a very boring answer in a sense because you guys know me for makeup as well. But that's how I've been living my life for like the past, uh, I would say like t l more than 10 years actually. Like for the past more than one decade, I've been living my life like fully absorbed absorbed into absorbed by the makeup world yeah Der Der derbex e also asks nothing about this but a general how are you doing um i am <laughs> i'm doing fine i am doing quite well actually i won't say that i'm the most productive person this circuit breaker quarantine season i don't know like everyone's at home and i tend to feel quite limited by what i can do when everyone's home and and like there's too much people in my house all at once all the time because i'm used to like just um being at home alone all the time at least three times a week i'll be at home for like a good eight to 10 hours and with that sort of freedom that sort of emptiness in the room i feel like i can create a lot more i don't know why i'm talking about this even though it's just like a how are you doing but i guess that's how i'm doing like i'm not my my mental state isn't at its maximum potential to be creative and be really really like i guess productive because i just can't function the way i used to function with so much energy around all the time so instead of forcing myself to create very vigorously i think i've been doing a lot more like me time things discovering new hobbies like i've been playing the sims 4 quite intensely i was just talking to my boyfriend like yeah, last night about this because like i went through a phase of being a little bit too obsess obsessed about um the sims 4 as a game because I don't know it's just a really fun game to me but i've recently come out of that obsession obsession like that low-key addiction to the game and now i'm just like i've found like a good midpoint midway thing where i still play it daily but i don't like play it without a like, care for anything else in the world anymore and i feel like um while i used to think of makeup as both work and hobby and therefore both my leisure time activity and my work. Now I've kind of relabeled everything. So I see makeup more as work. Work that I love. Don't get me wrong, I still love it, but it's more work for me now than actually something that is just pure hobby. Cause I don't really feel like I used to think differently. I used to think that you can both have a work that is also your hobby but now now that i've experienced it i don't think it's possible i don't think it's healthy to see something as both work and hobby at the same time because that really gives you no respite from the thing at all and you just become known for one thing and one thing only like <laughs> like the iconic thing is like yeah i'm just known for knowing makeup and that's all i am and i feel like that's very one-dimensional and a little waste of your life 
while I wouldn't say that playing The Sims is like something that is like super wow but it's still like a creative outlet because I, I do enjoy building in The Sims a lot more than playing in The Sims like playing the actual Sims in The Sims I like to build in The Sims and that gives me kind of like an alternate creative outlet it's almost like painting or like drawing but digital and on the game <laughs> so I, I, I see it as that so I kind of just adopted that as like my my main hobby that allows me to like just um, take my mind off makeup for a while and I feel I feel like mentally I've become a lot more balanced since adopting this sort of like extra hobby outside of my work which is makeup which is also fun so I feel like I'm having fun no matter what I do but at the same time I don't feel like I'm gonna burn out as soon or as or, or as as often <laughs> as I used to so I think I might have been super bright I hope this is fine so I guess yeah I guess um to answer your question I am doing fine I just hope that I can find a sort of way to adapt this sort of lifestyle into something more suitable for a life that involves going out I guess because right now I'm just like at home 24 7 literally 24 7 seven days a week so the way I live right now is probably not gonna be super productive and super feasible when I start being able to go out again so as of now as of quarantine I think I'm enjoying the life actually I'm enjoying life quite a lot there's actually quite a lot of like makeup questions I'm just gonna answer the remaining of like the non makeup questions and then we'll move on to the makeup so my friend Elsa asks what is your ultimate deepest fear <laughs> I think Elsa might have expected me to like answer this like in a really deep way. It should be answered really deeply, but I feel like my deepest, deepest, ultimate fear is cockroaches. <laughs> like the first thing it comes to my mind is cockroaches and no matter how hard I think about something else, it's still cockroaches. I am terrified of them. I can handle lizards and geckos, like house geckos, um, but I cannot with cockroaches. I really, really can't. Um, ew. I'm actually okay with spiders as well. I find them pretty cute and pretty cool. I, I wouldn't go and touch a spider, but I, I don't mind looking at them and watching them, letting them live if I see one. I'll just like set them free and stuff. Um, but I'm terrified, terrified of cockroaches. Like I've had many, many run-ins with like roaches when I was a lot younger. I think they came to harass me a lot when I was younger. So as I grew up, I just really, really disliked them to an insane degree. Like it doesn't even have to be a live cockroach. It doesn't have to be like a full-grown cockroach. Some people are only afraid of like flying ones. I'm afraid of all things cockroaches. So like flying ones, crawling ones, baby ones, dead ones, live ones, a single cockroach leg, oh my god, I cannot with any, <laughs> like oh my god, if, if cockroaches are to one day evolve and take over the world, I'm gonna take my own life, I'm, I'm serious, like I can't live in that world, I'll just die of a heart attack or something, like I think I have that phobia of cockroaches, there's actually a legit term for like phobia for cockroaches, I think I have that, there you go Elsa, that's my um, that's my that's my deepest darkest ultimate fear all right next question i think this is the last one that's not makeup related yeah i think so so denise asks denise who is like one of my best friends ever asks what do you do to overcome negativity <laughs> dude i'm quite negative all the time and i think you know that because that's all i talk about <laughs> when we talk I'm not a pro at this because like I said, I've, I'm quite negative almost all the time but I try to be positive. I was a very positive child. I was barely negative when I was younger. I didn't understand sadness and despair and all those things but as I grew older and things happened, I think I've gotten a lot more so like not sober but I've gotten- I've grown a lot and I've started to understand a lot more about like life and about about things in life and <laughs> I just get so negative and the more I think about things the more negative I get so what do I do to try to overcome negativity? I journal a lot I don't journal a lot right now because I feel like with my um, non-exposure to the outside world and stuff I, I feel a lot better in my own shell like in this like 
little tiny room of mine, little tiny green room of mine. I don't feel as exposed and as in danger of being upset by negative things. When things like that happen, when I feel really negative, I feel like the first thing I do is journal. Like I feel like it really does help. There's a lot of times where I've actually wanted very badly to kind of like do a blog post about journaling and talking about how writing really helps me um, process my emotions and process what I'm feeling. It really helps me put things into perspective and stuff. Other than journaling, I I'm also a big fan of yoga. I used to yoga quite actively like when I was a lot younger, like I'm 25 now. <laughs> but when I was like 17 to 20, around that time, maybe even 22, I was um, a lot more active with like wellness in terms of like fitness. So I did a lot of yoga classes and I think back then I never really had a lot of things to worry about. So it was really more of like an exercise to me, like a... <laughs> Because I don't mean like exercise, but yoga and pilates are like things that I can get on board with, <laughs> so I do those. But it's not really like a wellness thing, it was a fitness thing for me. Recently, I started picking it up again because um, I've begun seeing the results spiritually and mentally more. So I've been choosing to do like yoga, like I've, I've been doing it a lot more like these couple of days. Because editing videos can be quite stressful and now that I'm kind of PMSing, I cry a lot. <laughs> and like when I was editing the last video, the Charlotte Tilbury um, flower, my, my latest video, the, the flawless filter one, the Charlotte Tilbury flawless filter try on demo thing. I'll link it down below and up here if you want to check it out. When I was editing that one, I kind of almost died. <laughs> like I almost cried and I don't know, it was very frustrating. So I've been doing yoga quite regularly, like every night, like just some tiny little yoga at home like just like a 30 minute video i use i i watch um i mean like i follow what do you say like i i watch yoga with adrian i will link her channel down below as well and um, i think it's really helped me like not just fitness wise because i feel like i really need that little bit of movement in my life because i just sit sedentary like just playing my game every day so that that 30 minutes of like moving around and stretching my muscles and stuff, my joints, um, they're all like a lot happier recently and I can feel that. And I feel like it really just helps centers me and it lets me take my mind off things for a while. You know what yoga does, like even if you don't believe in it, you, you've heard what yoga does for you in terms of like negativity and stuff. So I think that's been helping as well. Okay, I'm moving on to all the makeup stuff which are a lot more stressful. <laughs> Oh my god. So Whitney asks, um, how did you get into makeup? She left me quite a couple of questions. The amount of support, oh my god, Whitney, you're the best. I would say I was born into makeup, <laughs> almost. I've always been very intrigued by makeup. Oh my god, I need to tell you this very, very funny story. But anyways, I would say that I've been born into this vocation before I even know what makeup was. I'm pretty sure I didn't know what makeup was, but I was very young. I, I was probably like, Two or three, I could ask my mom. I was still sleeping in my, my parents' bed and I couldn't sleep, but my parents were outside like watching TV or something and they thought I was asleep, so they didn't come in to check on me. But I wasn't sleeping because <laughs> I wasn't sleepy. So I left the bed, I went to my mom's dresser and on top there, there was like the baby powder, the, you know, the Johnson's baby powder thing uh, that she used on me. Uh, I just took that bottle, that whole bottle of powder, went back onto the bed and then I started like kind of pouring everything out, like shaking all the powder out onto my pillow. And I, I was just like playing with the texture of the powder, like, you know, like just enjoying it. And I started like applying it all over my face. <laughs> like I was just like doing this all over my face. I'm not sure if I've watched my mom put on makeup back then. That's where I got the idea. If I did, then I don't know. I Maybe I know what makeup was, but apparently not enough because I used baby powder. <laughs> my father walked in to check on me after a while. <laughs> I think I started with a full bottle of baby powder and then I kind of used up the entire bottle and it, it was all on my pillow. There were mounds of baby powder all around. And yeah, my, my dad walked in on that scene, can you imagine? <laughs> and like white face and all. It was an emergency apparently and they had to like clean me up and change my pillow. And I think, I think my mom cried a little. I think my mom cried a little. I think who won't cry when your kid does that? in the middle of the night. <laughs> I don't know, so 
yeah that happened so i think that was like my first ever memory of like something related to makeup and i feel like that's really telling of my interest <laughs> all throughout my childhood years my my grandma and my mom they were more of like that simple lipstick only kind of people especially my grandma grandma grand my grandmother so like all grandmas they always have like their lipstick kept in a lipstick pouch really really cute stuff and then they will have it in their purse so whenever we went out i would just ask my grandmother for the lipstick and i'll just apply it on my lips or she'll apply it for me and i think my mom had a stash of like maybe five lipsticks or something in her drawer and when i was like i don't know seven or eight maybe six years old i snuck into her room when she was cooking and i tried on some lipstick <laughs> Like, like I, I wasn't supposed to, so my mom got really mad and she was like, Hey, did you like apply me? <laughs> did you like use my lipstick? <laughs> I was like, how did you know? But I, I, I don't know, I either had like stain on my lips or she just saw like something wrong. I don't know, mums know things and I didn't know how she knew. But I, I did sneak in to like try on her lipstick, like out of the blue. Like there wasn't a reason why. I just really wanted to use makeup, you see. And um, I, I was a flower girl once or twice in my life, like as a child. So those were like those special occasions where i actually was allowed to wear makeup so i wore like blush and lipstick and i was so happy about it at one point i think my mom bought like really really mini i don't know if it's a buy thing or it's like a gift with purchase gift with purchase thing but we had like two really tiny lipstick like this tiny like i don't even know if we have things this tiny anymore <laughs> but it was a really tiny like like two little tiny tubes of lipstick that was like a red color or something oh my god i love that thing i think that's how i know that i've always been into makeup i really love makeup since the start but if you're talking about like getting into makeup like online like in on social media and you know like getting into makeup proper i think it started when i was like 11 and i was watching youtube videos like music videos like back then there were a lot of like music videos on youtube and nothing else just at home after school like i was a lot on the computer for like an hour or two before i had to do homework so i would just watch lots of youtube music videos that was like 20 2006 when i was 11 if i was 13 i, I can't remember when but it was oh yeah it was 2006 is it 2006 or 20 2008 i think it was 2008 so when i was maybe when i was 13 and i think back then um every lovin was really big and i really loved every lovin so i was watching like all of her music videos and listening to her songs and singing along and stuff and i was enjoying and enjoying and then suddenly like in the suggested videos column i saw lauren luke panacea 88 panacea you know lauren luke the og the og youtube guru youtube makeup guru i found her video and i was like what is this it's like a avril lavigne inspired makeup tutorial or something and then i i instantly fell into like a rabbit hole of watching all of her videos like all of her eyeshadow tutorials and i was like quite blown away by this concept of sharing makeup tutorials online i didn't know that you could teach makeup at all <laughs> i didn't i didn't even know that it was a thing i think like since that day when i found lauren luke's video i was just enraptured and till this day i am still enraptured <laughs> as you can see whitney also asks what is your favorite makeup trend or trends that's so hard i don't have you noticed i don't really follow trends oh my god um what are the trends now anyways I can tell you what I hate though. <laughs> I hate the Instagram makeup trend. The blocky brows, super cut crease smoky eyes that are borderline drag queen-esque. Super contoured face and super overlined lips. Oh my god, I cannot stand lined lips. It looks so weird. I don't know why everyone thinks it's nice, but I don't think it's nice at all. For the trends that I like, what do I even like? What, what trends? The Japanese trend of the ingari blush trend where you put blush right directly under your eyes i love that trend oh the ego trend we didn't even ask me if i was gonna do like an ego trend ego 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 transformation sort of video and i i i'm afraid but excited at the same time because i'm not sure if i can achieve that look but i love the look a lot she asked two more questions so um biggest makeup tip always moisturize before you put on anything on your face you know i thought this was common sense to like put 
on skincare before makeup, but I, apparently it's not. I've actually talked to a couple of people who like go straight in into foundation without skincare because I don't know, they see it as like two different things. Like if I put on foundation and I don't need to put skincare or something, I don't know how they think, but it's wrong. <laughs> Prep your skin. That's my biggest makeup tip. If you want your skin to look good, if you want your makeup to look good, you gotta prep your skin. You gotta make sure that it's hydrated. You gotta make sure that the canvas itself is primed. And I don't even mean a primer. I just mean like skincare. Like just make sure that it is hydrated, mo well moisturized. You don't even have to use a serum if you don't want to, but just put that toner and get that that moisturizer on, so that it's not crusty. And if you need to exfoliate beforehand, do the exfoliation. Just make sure your canvas is at least prime before you put on anything else on top because that will help your makeup last. No, not last. Look a lot better. Sometimes it helps it last as well. But I feel like it also adds like a barrier over your skin. So like if you just use makeup on top of your skin, the chances of you breaking out is even higher. Because like there's no barrier of like a skin loving ingredient over your skin before you put on the makeup, which is sometimes prone to breaking out, you see. Don't skim on prepping your skin with skincare. Okay, next question. How much do you think your collection amounts to? <laughs> oh my god, I don't think I have the biggest collection in the world, but I don't... I certainly do not have a small collection by any means. And I am not good at math and numbers, so I don't know. My Colourpop stuff alone, I think I might have spent a good 500 Singapore dollars on all of my Colourpop stuff. And then if you think about how I spend a thousand and five hundred dollars every year in Sephora all the time, because I managed to maintain the gold membership since I started joining them in... I could check, like when was I? I think they tell me. Wait, hold on. I don't know for sure. But the history goes all the way back to 2016. So at least since 2016, so four years, uh, three, three and a half years. So 1,500 bucks for three and a half years. That, that puts us at $4,500. And then I buy some stuff that's not from Sephora all the time. Although not all my purchases from Sephora are mine. Some of them are my mother, some of them are my sisters. We just kind of share the card. Oh yes, and I also do buy a lot of makeup when I go overseas, like to Korea and to Japan. I wouldn't be surprised if my collection amounts to like a good $7,000. Maybe $6,000. $6,000 to $7,000. Let's just put it at $6,000 to $7,000 and maybe we'll do a video all about calculating how much my entire collection costs because I think that would be quite interesting. I would want to know, but I'm scared. Thanks Whitney for all the wonderful and very hard questions to answer. Sae Umezaki. Sai, she's a very sweet little follower of mine. <laughs> little sounds so bad, but she's a very sweet follower of mine. She's been very kind to me all the time. She asked, what inspires you? I love your makeups. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sai. I think like usually colors inspires me a lot. I don't really like to copy like another person's full look per se, but I do like to kind of like take my own spin of things. Like if I see like a color scheme that I really like, like say pink and blue as I'm doing now, like I may be inspired by the palette that I'm using, in this case the Huda Beauty Mercury Retrograde palette or the colours of like an outfit, the colour scheme of like a pose, a photo, a flower arrangement, sometimes even a cartoon character like Winnie the Pooh, I mean like she's <laughs> My Winnie the Pooh hat from Tokyo Disneyland is right here so so I just kind of used him as reference. I find that on Instagram, I tend to follow a lot of accounts with feeds that are really really very pleasing because I feel like I get the most inspired by like a cohesive colour palette. I hope I'm not disappointing anyone with my answers. Um, baby ZMVP. She's been following me for a very long time too and she's always been very nice to me as well. Um, she, she says, not a question, but I just want to say I really like your content. Your eye looks are so pretty. Thank you so much. Oh, that makes me so happy. Thanks for liking what I do. And thanks for supporting me by actually leaving me a message even though you don't have a question. Thanks so much. Why am I having so much trouble with my eyeliner today? <laughs> oh my god, it's such a mess. Don't look closely. It is horrible. Shauna asks, Shana was like a friend in university, like we had Japanese classes together, so that's very sweet that we're still talking. <laughs> and she's always supporting me, so like, thank you so much Shana. She asks, if you have to get rid of everything, what will be that one item that you can't give up on? 
If I have to go makeup less forever, I will. But I will not give up my Lucas Papa ointment. It's not technically a makeup product, but it can be. It's basically like a... It's an ointment. And it's made with fermented pawpaw fruit. And I use it as lip balm. Speaking of which, I should have some more on my lips. It's like so dry. And I use it mainly as a lip balm. But I also use it as like a cuticle oil because it's really hydrating. Sometimes I have breakouts that are really really bad and with like broken skin and like really swollen and it looks like it's gonna fester and become even more swollen and stuff. I will put some of that pawpaw onto my, my acne as well. If I get a burn or if I cut myself, anything that has to do with like open wounds or like skin issues, like a rash. So I feel like it's a really good like item to own. So if you want me to like not own anything else anymore and you want me to not wear makeup anymore, I'm gonna go with that because that will heal my pimples and if I have good skin then I won't need to feel like I need to wear a lot more makeup. Then a similar question from Doreen, my other best friend. <laughs> she also left me three questions and they are quite quality questions. <laughs> like I, I was very excited to answer them. And if I'm not wrong, that's like my last. Ooh, yeah, Doreen's questions are my last question, so I'm answer them and we'll be done. The first question from Doreen is quite similar to the last one. If you can only have three essential makeup items, what are they? I assume you mean like brandless things. I'm going to say a good eyeshadow palette. It can be the small one, it doesn't have to be like a big one, but it has to have like um neutral shades. The one that I have in mind right now is actually my Fenty Snap Shadows in number 7 Cadet because like I've been using this for my brows. If you notice, I use this for my brows today as well and it's actually an eyeshadow palette and it has like really good shades for like both eyes and my eyebrows and it can also double as like a bronzer and highlight if I want it to. So it's like a really nice versatile product that is also really small. It doesn't have to be the exact one but it will have to have matte shades in neutral tones ideally with like a brown and a black so that i can customize and ideally with like some shimmery skin tone shades so that way i can use like just one product for many many different reasons and still kind of have like a full face almost and then the next product i will have is like a lipstick and i'll have it in like a traditional cream lipstick formula doesn't have to be of any brand any brand is fine but creamy for one and i would like to have it in like a red Tone. I want a red because I want to be able to like customize the amount of intensity and I feel like I look a lot better when it's like a brighter lipstick shade like I can use it as a blush, as an eyeshadow or as like a lipstick She also asks, do you have a role model in the area of makeup that you look up to? I was thinking about this and I think I'm gonna go with Linda Hallberg Linda Hallberg is like a Swedish, if I'm not wrong, like um, content creator, makeup brand owner now and um, makeup artist as well. She's always been my favorite for a long time actually. I think her work is amazing. She's super good at what she does and I don't know how makeup ideas that she creates come out of someone's head like that. I don't understand. I'll link her Instagram and YouTube channel down below. I think she's focusing more on like her makeup brand right now which is actually really really interesting and it's a little different from like how makeup in America is like because she's not American so she does things a little differently but her looks are so good so be sure to go check her out if you're really really into makeup I think you might like her stuff as well. Last question from Doreen. What is beauty to you from then versus now? Before social media and all that until today. Well there's so many different directions that I can take this topic on too. I think social media is a really good thing. I mean, obviously, I'm like sort of working on social media right now and I truly believe in social media. I know that there's a lot of bad things that comes with being on social media and working on social media or like just plain flat out being addicted to social media or like the use of social media is actually quite irresponsible sometimes. So like it's a really iffy thing. It's like a with great power comes great responsibility kind of thing. There are like of course bad eggs and good eggs out there. People do various different things with their power on the internet. I like social media for the aspect that you can share whatever you want to we want to share. Although it usually turns into something super wrong <laughs> not gonna lie but when it's used correctly at least in my opinion and in my experience using and being on social media for so long i think because of social media and the freedom of having the power to create content and post content regardless of whether you are someone who is hired by a company like 
for example like a magazine or a TV station or radio station you know like newspapers advertising channels these traditional channels they are manned by someone they have like a hierarchy they are in a they are a company usually and they are, they are like people to answer to and masterminds on top and you know all those like traditional stuff so with that i think that there was a lot less freedom before social media so with the rise of social media i think more people are empowered to post their realities in a sense growing up if you are as old or older than me you might have seen like a handful of magazines like Elle and Teen Vogue and Vogue and whatever else that is available in your country like the mainstream magazines for example if you've grown up as a girl like a teenage girl a child in this world <laughs> during that time there was only a handful of magazines where you get exposed to like beauty standards uh, yeah there are standards but you didn't know there were standards then you just get exposed to like these like blonde beautiful women or like a dark hair but quite caucasian looking women like you get one or two different standards of beauty when social media wasn't really a thing i think everyone can agree to this representation in beauty was so limited and everyone felt that so with the rise of social media and everyone being able to share like their preferences their ideals in beauty like it everyone has different tastes of course contrary to popular beliefs everyone is entitled to how they view beauty and what they find beautiful there are unpopular opinions and popular opinions but there are many different sorts of opinions and i think like i think like i really treasure the the diversity that social media has gifted us with so everyone has a say now which gives a lot of people a lot of reason to start arguments and to be nasty to each other which i think is the bad side of social media but if we keep on the bright side of things we wouldn't be having this kind of conversations if not for social media if not for social media i think my view of beauty before social media was that the barbie doll woman with long blonde hair and blue eyes is the epitome of beauty like that would have always been my ideal my idea of beauty and i kind of see that happening still sometimes i still kind of fight with that instinct a little because you know i play the sims right so i can kind of create my own character my own like girl like it's like it's like creating a doll basically like creating your own doll so like sometimes i still find myself having to actively fight against needing to create like the most beautiful sim that is like fair skinned and fair hair light eyes i still have it in me because i did grow up in that generation no one told me that there was more than one sort of beauty or beautiful no one actually explicitly told me that this was beautiful but it's something that was in the zeitgeist of that era so it kind of just translated into what i am in my kind of like consciousness so now that i have social media and i have like education i feel like i am more well equipped with the tools i guess like the the information i need to sort of actively fight against this sort of like impulses that was inculcated into me when i was younger I don't know if I feel like girls now are a lot better off like girls growing up in this generation when they started having Instagram and they were like 9 years old or something like I don't know if that's a good thing girls nowadays growing up they face a different set of problems girls my generation we face this sort of problem and I think it's because I grew up from this generation of like the um, growing up in the early 2000s um, I think that kind of allows me to see things this way where it's like social media is a good thing in that sense even though there's a lot of bad about it so in terms of like me viewing beauty standards and stuff to answer the exact question i'm able to accept a whole variety more like i recognize inside me the ability to um accept more diversity in my beauty standard thingy in my head you know you know what i mean i hope that makes sense but basically that's how beauty standards has changed for me then and now I've always been into magazines as well. I mean, like, I never really read a lot of magazines, but I did read a fair share. And I played with Barbie dolls. I, I played with Barbie dolls when I was a girl. So imagine an Asian girl playing with a Barbie doll and wanting to always have Barbie and not Kayla the brunette. They had an Asian Barbie at one point, didn't they? Or was that Brett's? I don't know, but basically, like, you know, like, growing up with Barbie dolls and stuff is just not for an Asian girl it's not the best thing when we're talking about like beauty standards and like growing up with this kind of like silent hidden threats <laughs> to our image and capability to love ourselves in a sense 
because everyone wants to be beautiful, right? So if you are told from the start by a whole society that you are not born to be the ultimate beauty, then how will you grow up feeling like, you know? <sighs> this it it suddenly got so deep, but you know, like when me and Doreen, because she's like one of my best friends, like when we call each other on the phone or you know, like when we meet up, we do get into quite seriously deep topics like this. It's like one thing I really treasure about our friendship. So you know, it it's just happening now on camera, like not directly to her, but it's her question. So I think it warrants the same amount of intellect. <laughs> I guess. If you're talking about like me before and after actually participating on social media, like me before Shamin CCW or before that it was Shamin C Shamin CMUA, but I kind of converted that page into like a like a makeup artist portfolio that is kind of dead right now because I don't get any jobs because of Corona. <laughs> but um, so like in the history of my Instagram page, if you're talking about that sort of before and after, nothing much changed. I just. I try my very best to stay true to my own sensibilities and my my own preferences to make up. So I I wouldn't do something that I don't want to do, and I wouldn't like try something that I don't want to try, like makeup wise, trends wise. I really love fuchsia pink lipstick, by the way. I usually tend to like to do like a fuchsia lip for my birthday, because it's like my favorite color for my lips. <laughs> I just don't use it enough because I feel like it's a very specific color, but it's my birthday, so I'm using it. I think before I actually participated in social media, the whole world was quite glamorous and quite fun, and and I just really enjoyed, you know, beauty and stuff, and like makeup is so much fun. But when I started social media and I started posting my own stuff, I kind of realized that the world likes to categorize you into boxes. Like, if I'm an Asian and I don't look either A B G or Korean K pop star. They don't know where to put you, and then like they don't react very well to the makeup you do. Cause I feel like whenever I do looks that are either super ABG or super Korean K poppy, I get a lot more likes and a lot more reach. Like from like studying my analytics through these years, I sort of kind of concluded that that's the case. So like for many people, I think it's still all about trying to look like a certain person or trying to look. Trying to fit into a mold—that's what people usually want to get out of, like a tutorial or like to get out of, like inspiration. Like you want to see how someone turns into someone else, or like you want to see how you can turn into like this person. Like for example, like if you want to turn into like this stereotype of like an ABG, for example, you just watch other tutorials and what people do, and then you just kind of turn, and then you just kind of become like one of many that looks the same. Even inside me, I feel sometimes that. There's like this sense of accomplishment if I end up looking like one, and someone comments that I look like someone <laughs> from the K-pop world. Um, while I'm always very happy to receive um comments that I look like some K-pop star because who doesn't want to, who doesn't want to look, who doesn't want people to think that they look good enough to resemble a K-pop artist? I don't think that person exists because it's like such a compliment. Um, but you know, like it just makes me realize that. We still have a long way to go when it comes to I don't know if education is the right word, but maybe like just spreading the awareness that you don't have to fit into a box to be beautiful. We're still on a long journey there. I think it's just gotten started, but I think with the rise of social media, it is gradually getting better. But right now, we're not there yet. But I see the potential, so. I'm just going to try to kind of emulate this this sort of ideal, if you can call that an ideal, to resist the need to be put into a box, a category, if you will. So that's generally how I view makeup from then till now. But because of me participating in social media, I notice a lot more like what beauty is to a lot of people. My mom is so loud, <laughs> but what beauty is to a lot of people is not the same way I view. Beauty, so there's a little bit of disparity. I'm not saying that my way is the best way, but I feel like it's the healthier way. But you know, to each his own. Feel free to disagree with me down below if you want to. But with that, we are at the end of my makeup look and my Q and A. I need to drink some water. <laughs> okay, I wasn't actually paying attention to what I was doing to my eyes and my face, but. I like it. I feel like with the Mercury Retrograde palette, you can only use that couple of colors if you want to do something really innovative. So it's always like pink and blue and stuff. I think you can do like a purple blue look if you want. But I always end up doing something like this. But I have never done this exact look, and I think I really like it. 
I did use some Fenty Beauty stuff, but I, I mean, like, it's, it's it's really nice. Especially in person. Do you want a close-up? I will give you a close-up. Let's do fill. This is considered my birthday makeup as well because since we're not going anywhere because it's my quarantine birthday so lucky that I have quarantine birthday this year on my 25th birthday no less since I'm going to be at home my plans tomorrow is to not touch makeup do good skincare sit in my chair with my glass of strawberry wine that my boyfriend bought for me randomly because I just mentioned randomly that I wanted to try strawberry wine even though I don't drink anymore <laughs> But since he bought it, I'm just gonna drink it and since it's my birthday, there's no other reason. There's no better reason than my birthday to break my own rules while we and start drinking a little. And because of that, I'm just gonna sit down with my glass of strawberry wine, maybe two glasses. I'm not sure if I'm gonna finish the whole thing. And sim my life away. This would have been my birthday makeup this year, I think. I knew I was going to use my Mercury, my Mercury Retrograde palette because it's the most expensive damn palette I own. So I'm definitely going to use it for my birthday. <laughs> so with that, I think we're at the end of today's video. Thank you so much for sending in your questions if you have. If you haven't, maybe follow me on Instagram because I think I will ask more on Instagram when things like this happen because it's so much easier. I don't think I'm going to do a lot of this. I don't know, it's quite fun. But a lot of this seems slightly narcissistic, so I'm not, I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it. I don't even know how, how well this is gonna do, but once in a while, maybe I'll do like a Q&A. If you want to see more Q&As for me, please give me a thumbs up down below and also comment that you want to see more. If you enjoyed this, also tell me down below and also give me a thumbs up if you like this because I really want to get a feel of whether you like this kind of content or not. I don't know if I'm doing this well. I mean, it's my first one. It's my first ever one, so I don't know if this is going to be good, but we can only get better from here, so you know. Also, subscribe down below. Subscribe to me, please. <laughs> And with that, thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. If I haven't mentioned already, but I did mention multiple times throughout this video, my Instagram handle is at shaminccw and I will link it down below as well so you can go and check me out there and follow me and look at my makeup content there and stuff. And with that, thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of this video and I will see you in my next one.